Heavenly Father, we come tonight as a very grateful people, grateful for the wonders of spring and the beauty that you have around us, but especially grateful for the moisture that we are receiving. And we ask tonight that you give us a downpour of your wisdom, your courage, your knowledge, and that sometimes we just have that sprinkling of patience and endurance and perseverance. Help us to be trusting that you are the one who will send us what we need when we need it, that you will be our light and our courage, and that as we gather together to do your will in the work of the people, we just ask that you be with us throughout this time and forever. We ask this blessing and every blessing by saying, Amen. that I want to make and so you know what my points are. What I would like to do uh, is have more of a discussion with the members of the council and the mayor who have voluntarily assumed leadership positions in our community. The community looks to the council and the mayor naturally in a time of crisis. We want to hear from you. And so tonight, I would like for us to have a discussion of the point on the agenda that, that I asked to be put on here, progress to date in replacing the grocery store. Does anyone have anything that they would like to say to the community about how you feel where we are in our progress today in replacing the grocery store. Well, I don't think right now at the moment we have anything. There's nothing. There is no progress at the moment. And, and do you do you see that over the next three months, that's that's the last three months, over the next three months, is there anything that's going to change that? No. Uh, thanks for your frankness. You know, I think the citizens are appreciating that. Is there anything, and, and does everybody agree with that, basically? And does anybody have any, any ideas on how to make the next three months of replacing our grocery store any more productive than the last three months have been? The biggest turtle that we have to overcome right now is location. The old store is not available, and it won't be available for another nine to ten years. Regardless of what Kroger may have said in the beginning, I don't think they have any intentions of turning that lease loose. I've spoken with a member of the lodge. The lease is unbreakable per their term. Basically, from my understanding, when they wrote that lease five years ago, they wanted to do anything they could to make sure Dillon stayed in town, and so they let Kroger break the lease. Um, and there's no incentive for them to break it at this point in time. So, I, from my standpoint, the biggest hurdle we have is where are we going to put another grocery store? And where are we going to come up with the money to 
either rehab or put in a brand new building. And, you know, I don't know of, of too many members in the community that have three quarters of a million dollars laying around to be able to start a venture. Um, I have spoken with a number of different people with regards to potential suppliers, um, equipment, different things, but until we have a site or a building, there's really not a whole lot we can do. And this is really a private enterprise now. I mean, I understand that, you know, we are the leadership of local government, but we don't have really anything to vest into it at this point until someone comes and says, hey, we'd like to open up a grocery store in your town. What would you be willing to do to help us make that happen? So in the meantime, you see your role as completely passive in this process. I don't know what other role we can take. Okay. I okay. mean, we don't, we don't, we don't have money to throw at the problem. I don't know that we have ground suitable to throw at the problem. I mean, I know the city has property. And I, have a, I don't have a list in front of me, but most of what we have is either being held for future wells or is in an area that would make sense to put a grocery store. Okay. Well, I'd like to comment with two points on you know, this is a private enterprise and, and we don't have anything, we as a council and mayor don't have anything to do with it. First of all, imagine a tornado hitting the city or a fire raging through the city. Would the council say, oh, there are people hired to take care of that. If there's a crisis in town, my point is the closing of a grocery store in a rural community is a crisis. It could have been a tornado, it could have been a fire, it was the closing of our only grocery store with two weeks notice. We're in a crisis, and I think all hands need to be on the back. Now the second point that I would make about being passive, a passive city council, is that just as soon as that sales tax goes on the ballot, you are involved, and particularly once that money starts coming in to provide incentive for a grocery store, you are up to your eyeballs in involvement in bringing a grocery store in. That's assuming the sales tax passes. That's correct. But and that's that's a, that money is not totally set aside for a grocery store. Well, it may not be any of it set aside for a grocery store, and that's another point that I'm making there that I won't go into now. Now, I, my time is probably just about out. But these are questions that the citizens are raising, and they're questions that deserve to be answered in an open way. And if your answer is, our city council and mayor are completely passive on this, then you need to tell the citizens that. Because we need to move on and find something else to get this going. I am looking for a date for the annex to do another town hall to update the community on where we are at with this issue. Hopefully but sometime Julianne, at the end of this month. You're going to update the community on exactly what Mark said. You know this. That is a waste of time. Let me, let me make a proposal. Now, I've, in my statement, I've referenced Kansas State's Rural Grocery Initiative. And I'm getting the increasing feeling that we're trying to reinvent the group. The Kansas State has a bunch of brainiacs that don't do anything but sit around and think about rural grocery stores and the crisis to the community when the store closes. We need to get them involved with this. And one of the ways that we can do this is to have a city delegation to the 2016 National Rural Grocery Summit in Wichita. Now that has our name written all over. We need to have people 
people there talking with the experts in the field, talking with other people who face this problem and overcome it. And so I am working to get as many people as possible over there and working to try to raise some money for an in effect scholarship fund for people who may not have the wherewithal to pay for it. So if you would all now, go online, the World Grocery Initiative has a wealth of information on its website. And there's more information about this summit. And so I urge all of you, I urge you to get involved. I'm not optimistic that that's going to happen. But I think there is reason for people who are the leaders of our community to really get engaged in this. Thank you. Thank you. Consent agenda. Approved minutes for regular meeting on 4 5 2016. Approved minutes for special workshop meeting on 4 12 2016. Approved appropriation ordinance 0405 2016A in the amount of $30,778.44. Approved appropriation ordinance 0419 2016 in the amount of $34,353.68. And renewal of computer information concepts annual people wear agreement for 2875 through June 2017. Are there any comments or questions on the consent agenda? Move to approve. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Um, Chief Saylor. If I'm in executive session to discuss not elected like personnel to include the council and mayor, please. Okay. How about legal counsel? Yeah. Okay. Motion has to be made by the council. Yeah. We need a five minute executive session to include mayor, the chief of police, and legal counsel. So moved. Council. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. We adjourn at the. 7 18. Community members come up to me and ask why they're not being put into the uh, St. John News. Can we start getting that uh, published again? Because mm -hmm. right, I've noticed it myself that it hasn't been in there. So I know that your time is, you know, you have quite a bit on your plate, mm -hmm. but uh, we need to get that in there if we would, please. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, I just want to talk to you guys, kind of bring you guys up to date for the Jubilee, because it's going to be next month. Um, the, the buttons are ready to be sold. My idea for selling, trying to get more buttons sold is to go out to different businesses to see if they would sell some of them for us too, so they're just not all here. Um, the other thing is Friday night we're going to have a glow run, and it's going to be a 5K kind of glow run, and they get a t-shirt and some other stuff. And then Friday night's entertainment is this couple, and they're coming from Oklahoma, and they do tricks with um, LED lights and fire. So they're going to walk around for an hour kind of juggling these LED lights. And, and kids can go up to them and they'll teach them how to do it. And then at about 8.30, they're going to get on the stage and they're going to do a fire performance and juggle the fire and, and that kind of stuff. Um, we're in the works, too, on this side of the street to put in black lights for the glow run so when they run across then it, all this side will be lit up by black lights. Um, the beer garden is going to be moved. We have someone that, that has graciously said that they would run it for us and um, it's going to be moved into the Dillon's, former Dillon's parking lot so then that way they only have to block off um, a couple of entrances. The Tom Faulkner's band, it's their 25th anniversary. He did 10 Day Wish. He's originally from here and the band started here so he's coming back and that's going to be your guys's um, street entertainment and then Saturday is going to run pretty much like it did in the past all this information is is on the website we're working on getting a portal button so they can just click right on that and it's going to take them right to the rest of all that information the only other thing I was going to 
kind of request from you guys. The last couple of times, um, I've had to graciously ask Corey for his credit card so I could purchase things because of going to conferences and everything, and, and he is graciously always there for me to use it. So um, I was just curious to see if there was any way we could raise it to maybe $1,000 so I don't have to keep calling Corey and asking him to borrow his credit card. I, uh, I'm kind of on the other side of the fence, but I've been here longer than you guys have. And the reason for that being was an episode that we had about eight years ago. I, I guess it'd be okay now. You probably don't know what I'm talking about. Well, there'll be receipts with everything, at least with the credit card. Yeah. There's no way to vary that. So, uh, I don't have a problem with that. we got a new firm. Not that I don't trust anybody that isn't it at all. Nope. Um, have you had any uh, local organizations uh, come up to you uh, about Jubilee to have a booth or table, anything? Um, there's the one that wants the non-smoking policy for the parks. She's asked for one. Um, Stafford County Hospital has asked to donate the water bottles for the glow run. So we're going to talk about that. And then the alumni has asked for them. The rest of the booths that have come in are all food vendors. But the I did send, I have a contact for the lady that set up the Relay to Life in Great Bend with her vendors. And she has graciously taken my application, our booth registration, and has passed it out to all the vendors she had at the Relay to Life. Plus emailed it all to everybody. So I, I'm really hoping that maybe we could get more than just and a few trucks and a few vendors here. And the Lester, uh, there was an issue with uh, the fire department. They wanted to come down. Yes. Um, I don't know whether they've approached you or not yet. Not yet, but okay. I, I think they know that they are more than welcome to. Okay. Anyone is more than welcome to set one up. Right now. I, I personally thought they had a really good idea last year. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But no, I have a couple of issues with you. You believe that you could, I'd like to ask you, you might pass it on or whatever. Uh, have they got permission to do that? that? Yep, we went to the lodge last Thursday, and, and the lodge is the ones that own the parking lot. Right. So we've gotten verification okay. from the trustees that we are allowed to use the parking lot. We have the parking lot for both Friday night and Saturday night. Cool. Uh, what about liability? Liability. We're covered for the beer garden. Okay, that's fine. That's all right. One, one last thing, the um, carnival. They're yep. still going yep. to be over here. They're still going to be located over here. They're still going to be located over here. Um, we have four food trucks that want to come in, so we're going to may have to look at the electricity and the voltage that we have. We may have to push them down a little bit more uh, towards the courthouse just so we can have the room for them. But uh, we're just kind of waiting for all the other booths to come in before we decide that. Put their trailers where they yep. sleep right here. Are yep. they still going to be yep. doing They're that? still going to do that, and we've already asked all the owners of the property over there to see if that's okay, and they've all signed off saying that that that's perfectly fine. We've already done that. Maybe another thing we want to talk about a little bit is if the if it rains. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of comments because we canceled it, and then we didn't introduce it on Sunday or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We just done away with it. That might be something we need to think about. What do you think, man? Um, because last year when it rained, you know, we just yeah. shut it down and that was it. Yeah. Um, I don't... As long as we did it, you know, like started it at 1 o'clock on Sunday afternoon, I don't see an issue with it. I think if we start it in the morning, we're going to interfere with church services right. all over the place. And, I don't think we want to do that. So, but yeah, I mean, if we want to shift it to Sunday for three or four hours, whatever we need to do, I don't see an issue with that. So we don't have the same thing happen right. this year that happened last year. So. Well, before we need to cancel, we need to look at the forecast. Yeah. 
Corey. <laughs> all right. As we all know, the seasons are changing and the, the pool is coming up. So one thing that um, has been brought up to my attention is that we currently um, have a minimum age requirement for my blood at 16 years old. There's been some interest. 16. 16. There's been some interest from some 15 year olds that would like to um, become black folks. I was wondering if there's any issues with, with that, if we can change the age to 15 to, to accommodate these younger <coughs> students or want to have a job. Child labor laws so, so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I've already. I've got some minutes of yeah. There's there's a couple stipulations that um, the labor laws hold. Um, they're basically the amount of hours that they can work um, and the times that they can work. Most of it will, will be okay because they're outside of school. They just want to make sure that they're not going to interfere with their school. So. So they need to be trained by the American Red Cross. The American Red Cross will train them at 15 years old. Um, and they can carry on the regular duties. They, they, can't, they can't be in a chemical room or something of that nature. That has to be something that's a word that I think that's kind of some of our responsibilities to make sure so we get them in over our head. So it says the 14 and 15 year olds um, outside of school hours, and you only have three hours on school days, including Fridays, um, eight hours on an off school day, and they can do 40 hours a week if the school is not in session. Um, they can work from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. June 1 through Labor Day weekend, and outside of that time, or inside of that time, it's extended to 9 p.m. So it, it'll cover a, a wide range Madonna called and talked to our uh, workers' comp and our insurance. They said they'll cover any and all of our employees. The Red Cross sort of price of that idea? Yes, they do. Starting at 15. 15. Charge per hour per lifeguard 
be on that. So, so basically, the max that you're looking at for a two-hour party, if, if you need two lifeguards, would be fifty dollars instead of thirty dollars, just to help cover. I just think it's necessary so that, you know, we can cut back an expense there by one guard, and then if need be, then, you know, if, if they know this know ahead of time, we can hire extra help to get in there. Is there anything else that you had in there, Stephanie, or did I cover? Um, no, I think that was all we need to discuss this episode. So the next thing I put in, in your packet was the... Uh, Water system training, the, uh, the spring training, or if you got a chance to uh, to look there or whatever. I uh, know it's during the middle of the day, but it's right here in our backyard. So if anybody's interested, let me know ASAP and I'll be uh, able to sign up because it is on all Thursday. Memorial crisis. How would that say? Yeah, just a policy. I think it's a policy. I don't think it's a resolution or an ordinance. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Well, I'll look and see, but I'm always positive it's a policy. So if you're if you're interested, let me know, and I'll I'll meet you on the schedule. And, uh, get your sign back. Um, the the other thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about was the sign of the um, I've, I've had a, a company come in and, and give us a, a bid on a new sign place out there. It's about $2,600. It's a, uh, it's a flat aluminum pan sign. Um, they wanted to put uh, like an aluminum raised letter on there, but we cut that out and went to vinyl letters to, to save about $1,000 on that. But the, uh, the price of that's roughly $2,600 with installation. Um, let's just see if there's any other ideas or if anybody knew, knew somebody out there would be interested in doing that. Um, I'd like to kind of stay away from, from the letters, the individual letters that were on the board, just as they, they're kind of hard to replace as, as they get broken and, and this and that. So that's just my opinion that I'd like to see flat sign or belt sign. Is uh, Greg Beatty still doing that? Anybody know? I don't think so. Anybody down doing it? Keep going. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Is Tony doing it? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Last council meeting, uh, Mark, you asked me to look into uh, some issues regarding um, what I think you meant was the, the, the Kyle grocery store, and then there were some issues regarding um, bonding authority. I don't know if you guys want me to answer those questions now or, or wait till we talk about sales tax increase. I can do either one. Talk about it now. Oh. Okay. The, uh, I talked to this first of all I talked to the city attorney at Medicine Lodge uh, to see if he recalled whether they did anything when when the food liner moved from I think it was downtown to where it's at now on the highway. And he says they didn't do anything. The whites I think it's whites, whites food liner did it themselves. Um, I think though what you were talking about was there's a a, a co op essentially that, that's run out of Kiowa, the city of Kiowa. Um, I'm actually their 
their attorney, though they've not had much legal work for the last couple of years. But that's that it was started in the 1940s, mm -hmm. either after World War II or, or just before World War, World War II, maybe as a result of World War II. Um, if somebody in the council wanted to meet with some of their board members, I can certainly arrange it. Um, it certainly provides an idea of, of something to, to mimic, for lack of a better word, if, if that's something council wants to do. I mean, they, they, they employ employees, they have a manager. Mm -hmm. um, I think LaDonna's even talked with the manager. Um, and they have a, a board. Okay. Uh, um, um, well, like I said, it's been for a long time. It's worked for a long time. Um, so it, I don't know. I, I can. I, I don't want to drag somebody up into a presentation, but I can. I could probably arrange something if one or two people want to meet with somebody from the board, or meet with several people from the board, whatever council wants to do. I would. I would like to meet with someone. Okay. I, I don't mean, know about anybody else on council would like to listen in on anything. Two of you guys can go. Yeah. So you and someone else. Depending on time, I'm probably good. Okay. Well, let me make contact first. And <coughs> I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. Where are we going to put it? Well. Yeah, I mean, until we, and this is just my opinion, mm -hmm. but until we have some idea of where we can put a facility, mm -hmm. we really don't have anything. I mean, we don't have anything to offer somebody to say, you know, we want you to come to our community and open a store, but, oh, by the way, you have to build the building and you have to buy the property and, and, and good luck getting somebody to turn loose of property. So, I mean, right. I think it's a good idea to talk to them. I just, we need to keep sight of the fact that until we have a location to put a store. Well, information right now, is, is, information is key. If we can get as much information right now and be ahead of the game, then that's fine. And I do realize we've got several hurdles that we have to overcome. And what you just mentioned are several hurdles. Um, I'm, that's why I don't believe that we're going to overcome those anytime soon. Uh, but if we can get this information, I'd like to hear a little bit about it. So The other thing was, was, was bonding authority. And I think it was the general question posed was, you know, can, can the city... You know, just like if it was building a sewer system or updating its roads or whatever, issue bonds for the building of a um, of a building, and, and it's it's kind of a loaded question because because usually when you think of those industrial you know industrial revenue bonds, for instance, involves a private company um, applying for those bonds and asking or those bonds that are used to, for example, build a warehouse or a factory and um, the, the, the warehouse or factory acts as collateral against those bonds. They're just issued by 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 the city. Okay, and then and then, and then the entity, the private entity, is is responsible for paying off those bonds. And so I, I, I talked briefly with Carolyn about you know you just throw out a number a million and a half um, or a million to, to to build a building like that, a grocery store, and her calculation was about six thousand dollars. A month in the bond servicing. So the problem is, you know, uh, we, we you have that number, but I guess we have nothing to compare it to to see whether there is the ability for a private entity to make up that kind of revenue located in St. John to pay off the bond. And now, and I, that's without going into too much detail because it's a retail or commercial enterprise, there's some restrictions on those bonds, what all those restrictions are at this point. I mean, I, she's really the best person to talk to about that. There are attorneys that just do bonding. Um, I've got the name of somebody that we've used when we used to represent Pratt County that did, um, for example, the bonding on the hospital. Um, yeah, I, and, and this kind of segues into to the, the tax resolution you guys have in front of you. I drafted it as general because 
I, I can't do it specific because I don't know what specific looks like. I can't earmark a sales tax increase at this point because I don't know what, what we're using it for and what we're going to do with it. That being said, the time frame for passing a sales tax so it can take effect just that first month in, in January um, is it's starting to starting tick. You probably need to adopt the resolution the first uh, part of May. With that being said, <coughs> going on with the mayor, is there anybody else interested in maybe seeing what they're wanting for the corner uh, out across from you, or go to electric zone, electric building road, get some numbers on what that what they want for that corner, just in case that might work for a situation? Last I knew, about a hundred thousand dollars. Do you know that? Is that a good number? Is that a fact? Or? Uh -huh. That was a while back. That was a while back. Ain't gonna hurt to ask Christ. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, is, is that building gonna be usable? Because you and I talked about it. And the building, uh, I don't think the building not for a No. Well, what I I'm mean, saying property. is, you gotta have a piece of property if you go to right. right. The property's fine. The building There's also a question. piece of property across from Napa that might be attainable. I don't know. You know, is that something the council needs to be, or the mayor needs to be looking at? She wants 30000 for it. Is that a property across from now? I mean, I don't think the city can buy a grant. The city can buy a grant. Would, you, would it be better for the land bank to be purchasing? Well, yeah. You could fund the land bank. You could put it in the land bank budget and purchase it. Or the city purchase it. You know, I'm not saying we're going to buy anything, but at least we ought to have some good numbers. Um, we've had a couple of uh, community members ask me about the industrial park. What exactly are we doing with the industrial park? And I know that there's no connections out there. Well, there's what are we also doing? room for additional wells on that industrial park. I think and you're going to put zoning around each well. You're going to have, I mean, the way we've done that is. Not all of it's going to be tied up, but a majority of that's going to be tied up with water treatment. Between that's water why wells I had Corey make copies of these because I knew this was going to come up at some point tonight. And there's really limited spaces right now, zoning wise, that we can put a grocery store. Um, well, one time you could always rezone stuff, but well, and I, mean, I don't think our zoning board rezones anything. Yeah. So basically we've got C2 zoning along the highway, um, down 4th Street to the Catholic Church on the north side. Um, where I'm going to assume that's the liquor store on the south end of the highway stuff, and it looks like into whatever the first street is there before Centennial on the south, and then to the edge of Centennial on the, on the west. That's C2. Um, there's a small section of C2 on West 1st. Um, I'm going to assume one of those is Davis and the other is the old Davis Electrical and the other one is the old Co-op. Um, and then we've got a couple of industrial pieces out on the west side, but those are occupied and I don't think that there would be any opportunity there. And then we've got the square in the area around the square that's, that's all zone C1. thought about the church building over here, pulling it down, trying to get a hold of it, but there's no parking. And, I, and it would have to be so. Um, 
the square itself. Um, the pawn shop is for sale, but it's too small. Well, you um, have no place to get trucks in without either. Yeah. Um, I think we would have the same issue with the west side of the square as far as getting trucks in and out. If, if we can get a hold of any of those properties over there. Um, and the same with the south side of the square. So I don't see where we could put it into the square, back into the square, at least not for 10 years. You know, right now what I see here as, as options are the property that Marshall mentioned, um, the old Joe's Electric out on the highway, Know there are some buildings along 4th Street that would probably be really good, but I don't believe that the owner has any interest in turning those up. And the only other thing that I can think of is the property that is, um, I believe, for sale. I'm not positive about this. That is south of the liquor store adjacent to the highway and that is currently zoned R1. So it would have to be rezoned. I reached out to Terry Spradley and asked him to do an article on our land bank a while back. I just recently got the particulars to him so that he might be able to do that in hopes that there might be people in the community that had property that was sitting vacant or deteriorating or whatever that they would be willing to donate to the land bank to start building that. Um, he hasn't run an article yet. And he'll get it in when he can. I mean, I can ask but he's got his priorities. So. That's not to insinuate that yeah, it's not a priority. Do that maybe this week here, but, okay. it. but um, he's been real supportive of us in the past, and, and I appreciate the work that he's done for us. You know, I mean, yeah, it's an issue. But and, again, until we have some place to put a store, I don't know how we can move forward. We can do all the planning in the world and have business plans and stuff all lined out and ready to go. But if we don't have the ground to put it on or a building to put it in, we're dead in the water. So just something for council to think about. And if council has suggestions for people for me to reach out to, I will be more than happy to do that. I have already done some reaching out with no success, um, but I will write letters, make phone calls, talk to anybody that I need to talk to. I don't have a problem with them, so you just need to let me know. That's all I have. Full business, pay scale. meeting you guys, we, we went over the pay scale and uh, you guys wanted me to kind of look at the figures again and then to give you guys some more options. Uh, so the first page will show you like a 3%, a 4%, a 5% all the way across the board if you wanted to do that. The second page is what you guys got last, last meeting just to kind of remind you of what the program you have now has recommended for people to get raises to kind of put them back in, in line. Uh, I also gave you guys a copy of a, another city, kind of what they do as a, as a pay plan. They kind of have um, like a, a series range from this point to that point. And then what they do is if you reach one, uh, a certain point on your evaluation, you get a 1%, a 2%, a 3%, and a 4% raise.
one is the example from the other city that that's kind of what they did is just an example for you guys to see if that's if that's something you guys want to look into um, I just liked it because it actually showed like the different yep yep that all goes together that's all this that's all from the same place And I believe with this one, um, if they reach their max, the the department head could uh, actually still go in and ask for a lump sum raise. Like if you reach the top of the tier and they get an evaluation, they can ask them to give them a lump sum. That was just an example of city turn that into. see what it kind of looks like for all of our employees based off of this here. I know that's a lot of work, but I mean, I think most of them, I don't know where we start our, our seasonal and part-time help at, though. I, mean, I 
I think the seasonal last summer, I think they were at, they were either at eight or nine. I think I think we're gonna be pretty much in there. I think anyway. I think okay. when I looked at it, I think we were pretty much in there. Right. I mean, uh, I there might like be to a see where each individual that absolutely. we have hired right now falls, falls in, in there. there. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of compares to it anyway. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, Bob, what do you think? Yeah, I'd like to see it on public. I mean, I think that's a good way of doing it. I mean, you guys are allowed to do the evaluation and stuff. I mean, do you guys already do like a a merit score or I mean, um, an evaluation score? There's an evaluation score and then you put it in to your pay plan and the pay plan is going to say, okay, if it's exceeding, they're going to get like 50 cents. If it's outstanding, they're going to get maybe 60 cents. It just depends on how close they are to that medium salary. But how difficult would that be to convert to? But this isn't wouldn't. anything like that because basically when you get evaluated, correct. depending on where your score falls, depends well, on your, correct. your yep. weight. Yep. So it's still, you guys are still going to score them. They're still going to be scored. We would probably just maybe have to raise the scoring because ours doesn't go up to like eight and nine. I mean, right. like the and most is like could three. Could you get with them and see mm -hmm. how they do their scoring yep. too as well? I mean, yep. that way we would Yeah, know. she actually sent me a copy of their evaluation. I just didn't put it in there with it. So it's just a matter of you reformatting the numbers? That I go think so. Okay. And then like next meeting or maybe next meeting we're it's getting kind of, there's a lot going on in the next meeting, but maybe the following one, you guys can see it. And I can line them all up and stuff. Sales tax increase. Well, it's all right. Sales tax increase. It's just sales tax. Sales tax implementation. <laughs> um, you have before you resolution 201606. And I'm not saying that this has to or needs to or should be passed today. You can let it sit for a little bit and rename it next time. But this is a 10 year, 1% sales tax, which would take effect uh, January 1, 2017. I don't know, uh, and obviously you don't start receiving funds on January 1, 2017, but it takes maybe uh, two months or so before, mm -hmm. or is it get, a quarter? It's a quarter. You? They should get something from like the, like your first quarter, you're going to get it in the second quarter, the second quarter you're okay. going to get it. So you don't actually get anything until April. Um, and then it would seize 10 years after the effective date of the tax. Um, the last one, that uh, last draft was no sunset. Like I said, this is 10 years. I think we figured it'd be about $100,000 a year without the grocery store. Um, I think we calculated Dylan brought in about 40000 so with the grocery store you're looking at 140000 for a year, so anywhere from a million to a million and a half over 10 years. But this resolution just puts a question on the ballot, right? This resolution Correct. puts a question on the ballot. You, the question there appears in our section 3, mm -hmm. and then the uh, exhibit um, is the what well, gets published by the county clerk, the election officer. Um, she has to publish. She published every August 2nd, so she published like first week in July. She published two weeks in a row. Uh, this notice, of course, she can amend that notice however she wants to, but I talked to her today and it looks like she would publish it just about mm -hmm. as uh, however, I drafted it. And again, it's, it's a general 
um, sales tax. Uh, can, funds can be used for anything. Um, I have in there that the purpose would include economic development projects and city infrastructure. That's what we've talked about in the past. Um, but you're not limited to using it for um, economic development or general infrastructure. And this, the city council would be in control of that money, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. And then, like, like I said last time, I just so you keep in mind, it, it requires, after this gets approved by the voters, you then have to pass the ordinance, and the ordinance requires a two-thirds vote of the council. So if you don't have two-thirds vote to pass the resolution, you know, it, it may not be worth going through election process, I don't know. I think the election tells us how to go anyway. Yeah, it could. I mean, I, I, I've, so. I've seen it not happen before. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't see any need of delaying on adopting this. So I don't need it on the ballot. Yeah. So I make a motion to approve resolution number 2016-06. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by vote. Right. Eric. Yes. You're up. How are you guys doing this evening? Uh, before you should have uh, the audit report, uh, there'll be a couple loose letters at the front. We're going to start with those. Uh, the first one is the communication of significant deficiencies or material weaknesses. Um, and as with all small cities this size, we did note the significant deficiency due to the lack of a small number of employees involved in the bookkeeping function of the city. So we just recommend to mitigate this factor that the council com continue to do the review function of the financial reports and the cash disbursements and so forth. The second letter is communication with those charged with governance. Things that could be in this would be disagreements between us and management on how to handle accounting policy. If it came to our attention, you were getting a second opinion from another auditing firm, things of those nature. We did not know anything like that. Um, we would also attach any audit adjustments that were proposed by us and approved for posting by management, but no such misstatements were noted during the audit. And then we've also attached the client representation letter. This was a letter addressed from you to us, just stating that you made available to us all the information that was requested, summaries of the minutes, that you're not aware of any contingent liabilities, things of those nature. All right, now if you'll turn to the audit report, page one and two. Uh, this is our opinion on the financial statements. Uh, for the year into December 31st, 2015, we have issued an unmodified opinion. Uh, and without going through each paragraph, uh, just to kind of give you an idea, it will first state that the financial statement is not prepared in conformity with generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, then it will go on to say, however, that based on the regulatory basis of accounting that the city is elected to use, the financial statement is presented fairly in all material respects. Page three and four. Uh, this will give you a broad overview of the financial activity of the city. This will give you year-to-date receipts and expenditures by fund, and then for the total reporting entity. Uh, if you look at the ending unencumbered cash balance, as you can see, all funds had either a zero or positive cash balance, so there were no statute violations, cash violations for the during the year. Starting on page five are the required note disclosures. Uh, we'll not go through each one of these. Uh, we'll just kind of hit some of the main ones. If you'll turn to page seven, middle of the page, note three, compliance with Kansas statutes. This is where we would disclose any statutory violations that came to our attention. As you can see, there were none. Page eight and nine is the note disclosure on long-term debt. The top half of the page is going to show the changes in long-term liabilities for the current year. And then the bottom half of the page shows the maturity requirements for the next five years and then five-year increments after that. All 
All right, now if you'll turn to page 14 and 15. Uh, this is the start of the regulatory required supplementary information. Uh, this first schedule is comparing the expenditures charged to each fund that is required to be budgeted under state law compared to the certified budget. If you look at the variance over under column, anything in parentheses is good. That means expenditures came in under budget, so there were no budget violations. Starting on page 16 are the individual fund schedules. Uh, these are going to give you a little bit more detail of the revenue and expenditures for each fund with comparison to the budget. Uh, we'll kind of look at some of the major ones. The general fund starting on page 16 uh, at total receipts of $852,995.06 for the year. And then expenditures are broke out by the major departments. It continues on to page 17 and 18. Total expenditures charged to the general fund were $731,403.69. So receipts were over expenditures by $121,000 and change. If you will now turn to page 27, uh, the Water and Light Fund. Again, we had receipts of $1.7 million, total expenditures of $1.784 million, which gave us a deficit in that fund of $12,364.48. I shouldn't say deficit, that expenditures were over receipts by $12,364.48. And most of the expenditures compared to the prior year were comparable, but one of the things that happened in 2015 was the purchase of the international truck in the 2008 Ford for the electric department. Page 29 is the sewer fund. Again, expenditures exceeded our receipts by $13,632.72. Uh, compared to the prior year, we were a little bit down in revenues in the sewer fund compared to the prior year. And then we also had the transfer to the capital project fund of $6,000 for its share of some capital project expenditures. And then if you'll turn to page 38, uh, this is the agency funds. Uh, these are funds that are in possession of the city but do not belong to the city. You're just kind of acting as the agent. You're collecting the money until they get remitted to third parties. Any questions?
every every month, pretty much. And this is to take effect for um, any billing after May first. It starts over every month. Right? And it'll start over every month. Yep. Uh, Kurt Fairchild got a copy of that and has kind of read over it. He's here today. You guys had any questions for him? Or have you got any questions for us about <coughs> Kurt? Yes. I don't believe so. The true right. number is right there on the next page. Yep. That's the true number. Because um, Charles, uh, one of the officers wasn't on that sheet, and so wasn't the part timer, Steve. Okay. He wasn't on there either. And then my, my cells weren't adding up. So when I got him to add up right then. But you got it? Yep. Yep, I sure did. Attention to that question. <laughs> I know, I was like, did you find it? <laughs> did you find it? Okay. Sure. I hope I did. You got everybody's attention with that question. Well, I had my attention. <laughs> okay. Can I get the motion to adjourn the right? Well, they hadn't voted on okay. it because Troy has a favor. All in favor of the motion to adjourn? Opposed. Motion carries 3-2.